I never noticed Skarsnik has these cool Gork and Mork face guard, face wrist guard things. Anyway, today I'm facing off against Koops once again, my patron, the Tomb King main, and we're going with some unusual builds here. It's sort of the counters to the counters, right? Yes, I did bring three catapults, there's an idea here, but uh, let's talk about the builds as we get a little bit of an artillery fight going. I've got Skarsnik, of course, anti-large AP, gonna be good against any Tomb King's constructs. AoE Anti-Large also will apply there. Fermented Fungi, of course, uh, can rampage uh, some expensive thing into these Black Orcs, potentially, so they can grind it down. They've also got a Gobble Big Boss on the Wolf. No poison, but he is much faster. 92 speed, 360 weapon strength, 50 charge. They need stabbing as well. I've got a Night Goblin Shaman. Uh, eight Peak Loons here in the center. Some Skirmish Cab Wolf Rider Archers, and then some Goblins also protecting the flanks. Coops here, currently getting his Kepper Guard absolutely shelled by the Catapults. The Catapults are actually here, believe it or not, to counter Ushabti Great Bows. Uh, the Great Bows have big enough unit models and sort of a big enough footprint as a unit that the Catapults can hit them. Not super consistently, the ROR can consistently at least, but uh, over time, of course, uh, you can deal damage to them. And it's just annoying enough that the Ushabti Great Bows can't just sit back and shoot. Uh, and then the rest of the build is obviously meant to counter like constructs, other armored units, and whatever else. Uh, Koops is coming in here with a Grom counter build, which is very interesting. I did want to show this off. Some cool synergy here. He's got Setra the Imperishable, of course, who has fire and magic damage. Magic doesn't really apply, but fire, of course, very good against Grom. And then he's backed up by the Necrotech. And although there are no uh, constructs here to actually heal, he's instead just gone with his Vambraces of the Sun, which is pretty strong overall as an item. It's disabled if the Necrotech starts crumbling, but minus 10 melee attack and 20% weakness to fire in a constant AoE is huge. That is going to give this essentially a 20% damage spike to Cetra, right? Uh, so against something like Stone Trolls, Grom, you know, the Troll Hag, all those weak to fire targets, Cetra will just absolutely raffle stomp them. I mean, 100 charge bonus with armor piercing damage and pretty decent attack animations for a chariot lord means that he will get the job done. The queen, though, of course, myself. How can I forget the Arachnorok queen here in the center? One of the best ROWs in the game. Going to pull up some spider hatchlings to help contest this light cavalry engagement. Uh, Skirmish Cab just picking away at the skeleton spears. Again, I don't have any uh, Ushabti Great Bows to shoot at, so we are actually going to switch the Catapults over onto this Casket of Souls here. Uh, there are also some regular Tomb Guard, plenty of Skeletons to the center, Nehekara Horsemen sweeping up over the flank here, looking to threaten my Catapult position. So I'm going to get the Spider, swing it back, the Queen, her... Uh, she, she'll come back over here and again try and throw some spiderling summons whatnot also maneuvering the uh, skirmish cab over here to potentially try and fight in melee big old wah being popped we'll get in close as the black orcs are just blending up skeletons like, extreme overkill for black orcs to just be fighting skeleton warriors in the front line but that is just how it goes sometimes kepper guard ended up holding out surprisingly well they come in and do some really nice anti-infantry damage to the eight peak loons here, who I don't remember if I actually got a cast of the loons off or not, but we're trying to use that. Uh, they need stab and anti fermented fungi both. Kind of overkill on the melee defense debuff, to be honest, but I really want to take down the Necrotech, um, you know, in order to uh, get rid of that Vambraces of the Sun. Honestly, probably should be using all those damage spikes on Cetra, but I figure, especially with the armor sundering, the Necrotech we could take out first, and I just, more than anything, want to try and even out that single entity fight. The uh, Neckar Horseman did get home on my catapult, start to shut them down. The Hammer of Gork had been applying that blinded debuff to the Casket of Souls, uh, decreasing its accuracy, which is great, especially considering that the Casket is shooting close to its maximum range. It's not going to be very accurate anyway, but uh, Cetra fighting in combat here. Incantation of Cursed Blade is going to give him the anti-large, the dreaded anti-large chariot fighting the queen here, so he'll actually do surprisingly well, but doesn't obviously want to sit and sustain combat too long. Going to pull through, get a nice charge through those black orcs, and pull away there the spiderlings and the wolf rider archer. It's not really faring super well against the Hecar horsemen, to be expected, but at the very least, giving me some models to contest that. The Necrotech did not manage to get through that fight unscathed. Again, I'm kind of going after him specifically because he's an easier target than Cetra to take out, and I just want to try and even things out a little bit here. Goblin Great Shaman, the only ones kind of still standing in this front line, all of a sudden gets surrounded by Kepper Guard, who, because they're regenerating, will actually hold for quite some time. <laughs> a little point-blank blast there. Just trying to hit the Necrotech with a little Vindictive Glare, but uh, anyway. 
Uh, the rest of the battlefield here, you can see another Wabing pops. And this uh, queen just pretty much unthreatened at this point. The biggest problem with Coop's build is he doesn't actually have any good tools for dealing with the queen. I mean, late game cycle charge, uh, you know, in a, in a pitch melee engagement, especially with the anti-large uh, currently being used on that poor Gapo big boss. Tetra could trade okay, but there's not a lot of other armor-piercing troops here. I mean, definitely in a surround with, like, the Nakara horsemen supporting. I guess there are these Tomb Guard with Halberds as well, have taken substantial damage. Uh, the uh, Casket of Souls has not been able to be shut down by me. I've not had the ability to get back there with anything effectively. All the Catapults been shut down, so a little bit of a mixed bag, but... Yeah, maybe. Perhaps, you know, if the if the casket can land some solid hits on these black orcs, like, that was a pretty decent hit right there. Maybe take out enough of their unit models. Of course, if you get rid of Scarsnick, that will debuff the leadership of the queen. Maybe you could beat the queen purely based on leadership and army losses in the late game if there's nothing else left, literally. But even these goblins are still threatening to the skeletons, right? And, uh... <laughs> Now, Kahara Horseman staying in a position to try and screen for Cetra. He comes in, just detonates some of those goblins. Again, arguably a little bit of overkill to use that flash bomb on that light unit. Maybe you want to try and use that on the orcs, but uh, got the fermented fungi still in the back pocket. Even though its duration is much, much shorter than it used to be, still an exceptionally strong ability. So, Cetra gets enraged into these two anti large AP poison single entities. Honestly, very similar weapon strength profiles. I think Scarsnick maybe even has better weapon strength than the spider. Regardless, Cetra's gonna go down. That incantation of protection can't protect him for too long. And with him gone, the rest of the Tomb King's army is going to hit army losses. So, a good game to Koops. Definitely a fun one. I have to say, I love his build for going after Grom. And since green skins are often called Grom skins, because Grom is really the best lord choice in most situations, I can see this working well you know, in, in against a typical green skins build. But of course, Scarsnick is really strong and at one point was sort of the meta pick for green skins, right? And still is very strong in this matchup. Uh, the tools he has access to specifically are all very nice here, whether it be the anti-large, the fermented fungi, his own anti-large poison AP, all very useful here, especially when combined with the queen. You know, these two, uh, it gives you great control without having to take a troll hag, which is awesome, right? Troll hags are, again, another one of those picks that's a little bit boring just because it's so commonly taken. But here, with the spiderlings and with the fungi, you still have plenty of control tools to, uh, you know, dictate your opponent's movements, try and uh, control the flow of the battle, obviously. So the uh, Gobbo Big Boss also punching way above his weight class, considering I think he's like 300-something, 400-something points with this particular kit. Uh, it's even cheaper than it is with the Spider. Probably would have been good to have the Spider, but I just couldn't quite squeeze the points out anywhere. I uh, didn't really want to cut anything too much. The Catapults didn't end up paying for themselves largely, um, but still, just the threat of them, you know, they were able to get to good damage initially on those Kepper Guard, and also just kind of threaten, uh, also drew, drew in these Nakara Horsemen into what ended up being a disfavorable engagement, even though they did pay for themselves somewhat. Uh, the Spider, you know, the Queen coming in with the Spiderling Summons, the Wolf Rider Archers also contributing a little bit in melee, even if that leads to them getting massacred for the most part. <laughs> Uh, they all come in and kind of push back uh, that enemy push. Uh, the Tomb Guards also, surprisingly, I, th I would have thought these Tomb Guards with Halberds would have done a little bit better. I guess they must have got tangled with Black Orcs or something else. Maybe took some incidental archer fire. I'm not really sure. But uh, Kepper Guard, despite getting shelled pretty significantly there at the beginning, did come in and recoup some of their value. Not quite as much as would have maybe been hoped for. Cetra, same thing. I mean, if he had been able to stay alive for longer... Uh, could have done a number on my build, but just not quite enough anti-large AP here. One thing Coops and I talked about is just even taking these Shabti Great Bows, even though the, the Rock Lobbers are kind of a soft counter for them, uh, it's still, you know, you're not guaranteed, especially if, if he were to have good targeting priority, you know, shooting just the Queen would be the number one target, absolutely. But Black Orcs, especially if you have the Regiment of Renown chosen of the Gods, the scatter shot would be pretty good at, at dealing HP damage to Black Orcs as well. So I would think Shop to Great Bow is just going to be situationally a little bit more uh, versatile than the Casket here, which is great anti-infantry, don't get me wrong. But as you saw there, fighting at sort of that ex the extreme end of its range does debuff the accuracy quite a bit. And me having my own artillery sort of dictated that 
uh, fight to happen a little bit closer to me, right? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.